The following presentation demonstrates the Skin Pampa technology manufactured by Pion. Pion has been established to provide tools and instruments for the prediction of absorption by measuring physical chemical parameters, including permeability. This presentation will focus on our Skin Pampa model to predict human skin permeability. In the first part of the presentation, we will introduce the key features of Pampa method and our skin model. Afterwards, we will present the ways of assay preparation and we will show examples of results that Skin Pampa can provide. First, let's start with the features of the system. PAMPA stands for Parallel Artificial Membrane Permeability Assay, that is a 96 valve plate based in vitro permeation tool. The PAMPA method has been first described by Kenzie and co workers in 1999. Since then, models are available for the gastrointestinal tract, for the blood brain barrier, and for the human skin. The PAMPA sandwich is composed of a bottom and a top plate that are fitting into each other. On the bottom side of the top plate, there is a PVDF filter that immobilizes the membrane in between the bottom and top compartment. Traditionally, the accepted solution is in the top compartment and the donor phase is in the bottom. The accepted solution has been designed to simulate the pH of the blood, so it is set to be 7.4. The volume of the acceptor phase is 200 microliter and the surface area of the membrane is 0.3 square centimeter, so the volume area ratio is 7 times smaller compared to general front cell assays that makes pump assay more sensitive. However, solubility limit must be considered and acceptable solubility of the active ingredient must be ensured. For that, cosolvents like Tween, Volpo, PEG400, PG, Ethanol, or DMSO are possible to be used. Solutions, liquid or semi-solid formulations, or transdermal patches can be applied as donor phase. The pH can vary in a broad range from 3 to 10. Water-based buffers, co-solvents or organic solvents as listed on the slide are compatible with the membrane. The list is, is uh, extended as new information are available. The membrane has been designed to simulate the features of the skin. The human skin consists of three layers, where the epidermis is known as the main barrier. The epidermis consists of five layers, and the rate limiting step is the penetration through the outermost layer, the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum consists of corneocytes, and the lipid matrix surrounding the corneocytes. As paracellular diffusion is believed to be the major route for penetration through the stratum corneum, our membrane has been created to mimic the composition of this compartment. On the next cartoon, I would like to discuss the Onsted water layer effect, also known as aqueous boundary layer. The unstead water layer is a sticky water layer on both sides of the membrane that can be the rate limiting step in permeability studies. The unstead water layer effect exists in in vivo conditions as well. For the gastrointestinal tract, it is known to be between 30 and 300 micrometers depending on the site. For the blood-brain barrier, it is known to be zero. There are no literature data available for skin surface. Some scientists predict a couple of micrometer thickness. In in vitro conditions, the thickness can be much bigger. For Pampa method, it can be about 1500 to 2000 micrometers, and, uh, and the same is reported for the KECO2 method. There are no data available for front cell method, 
but similar thickness can be expected. The limitating effect can be clarified based on this equation where the total resistance of the system is composed of the resistance of the unsted water layer on the donor side plus the resistance of the membrane plus the resistance of the unsted water layer on the acceptor side. If the membrane permeation that is marked with PM in the equation is high for a compound, then the resistance of the membrane is small and the rate limiting step would be the permeation through the unsted water layer, so basically the diffusion through the sticky water layer. To diminish this effect, we can apply individual well stirring on both sides of every single membrane. Orbital plate shakers are not suitable for this purpose as their mixing effect is zero in the bottom compartment of the sandwich. Using our stirring unit, it is possible to flip small stirring discs vertically in every single well that provides a very effective stirring and that can decrease the thickness of the unsteed water layer to as low as 25 micrometers. In the next part, I would like to summarize the ways of assay preparation. I will demonstrate two ways of preparation, one for liquids and one for semi-solids. Regardless of working with solutions, formulations or patches, the first step is hydration. This step modifies the structure of the membrane, therefore every assay should be started with this procedure. For hydration, the membrane should be soaked in the hydration solution overnight. The next step of performing an assay is the preparation of the donor plate. When working with solutions, pH can vary in a range from 3 to 10. Pure water buffers, co-solvents or pure organic solvents are also possible to be used. Liquid formulations can be applied as they are without any further dilution. The donor plate's volume is 200 microliter, but as the stirring discs has a volume of 20 microliter, we should add 180 microliter of solution or liquid formulation into every single well. After having the donor plate ready, we can remove the top plate from hydration, then it should be filled with acceptor solution and placed on the donor plate within 3-4 minutes, as if they got dry out again, they cannot be reused. The incubation time can vary in a broad range, we usually suggest to select an incubation duration between 30 minutes and 16 hours, however others are possible as well. We recommend to use single time point experiment if the donor phase is analyzed after the permeation, so typically when solutions are investigated. In other cases, we recommend to use multi-time point assays. Whenever it's possible, we recommend to use direct UV analysis. Our software is capable of doing proper mathematical analysis of the UV spectra and provide meaningful data even having weak UV signals. For permeability calculations, our software is compatible with all kinds of concentration determinations like direct UV, HPLC or LCMS as well. The first comparison I would like to show you is between skin pump results and front cell results measured on heat separated epidermis of human female back skin. The same donor phase has been applied in both cases that contained 45% of PEC400 to simulate a basic formulation. The graph demonstrates a good agreement between the two datasets. It also suggests that good agreement with human data is more likely if similar assay parameters are applied. 
Six compounds dissolved in three different solvents were used for another correlation study. Solvents were pure PG, pure water and pure ethanol. The left hand side graph demonstrates the correlation study for the permeability constants, while the right hand side graph shows the study for pump membrane retention versus skin retention, most probably stratum corneum retention. In both cases, we found a reasonable correlation. This study also proves that both permeability and membrane retention can be a useful data provided by skin pumper. The third study shows a comparison of the effect of solvents and surfactant-like solvents on ibuprofen penetration. 5% ibuprofen has been dissolved in 87% of water and 8% of solubilizer has been added to the mixture. The graph demonstrates that modification of the solvents has an effect on permeability and suggests that skin pumpa is useful in investigating the penetration enhancing effect of different components of, of the solvents or formulations. Some parts of the assay protocol should be performed different when working with semi-solid formulations. The main difference is that new modified bottom plates are available for this purpose that makes the formulation application much easier. Semi-solid formulations can be applied directly without any further modification. We suggest infinite dosing approach at the moment, but we are working on finite dose application. Using our new bottom plate, 40 to 50 microliter of formulation is enough to have a permeation time profile. Acceptor plate should be treated the same way as demonstrated before. The main difference in the incubation parameters compared to previous protocol is that we recommend multi time point assay to have a kinetic profile. This analysis provides a better view on formulations and it also ensures that we have data in the kinetic range as well before the equilibrium. Stirring can be done in the acceptor compartment only as there is no point to stir the semi-solid formulations. However, stirring in the acceptor compartment is crucial to get data with low standard deviation. The options for analysis are the same, but as formulations are usually complex mixtures of components where more than one compound can have strong UV signal, a direct UV analysis is usually not possible. Also, when using direct UV, donor phase cannot be analyzed after the permeation study, so apparent permeability can be calculated only not effective permeability, so the membrane retention is not considered. The first study I would like to show is a comparison of three silicon-based topical formulation of ibuprofen provided by Dal Corning. The blue and red bars demonstrate the PAMPA study, the green bars demonstrate the front cell results on human skin. We have found a good agreement between skin pampa and human results, though data for form B are not available, unfortunately. This study demonstrates the comparison of three topical diclofenac formulations, all containing 1% diclofenac. The graph shows that we were able to differentiate the formulations. The blue and red dots belong to the same brand without and with a new penetration enhancer, respectively. This small difference could have been also identified. The kinetic curves also demonstrate that the lag time is around 0.5 to 1 hour typically. We also have an ongoing study with transdermal patches. This study includes the investigation of three commercially available nicotine patches. A significant percent of transdermal patches cannot be cut into pieces. 
we have applied the patches as they are without any modification or treatment. The Permation Triumph Profiles proves that the system is suitable for comparison and for ranking order. I also would like to talk about reproducibility, as this is always a key question in every 96 well plate based high throughput technology. The third slide shows 390 Raman spectra on each other as the total surface of the membrane has been scanned. As Raman spectra are qualitatively and quantitatively related to the composition, this proves that the membrane is distributed homogeneously on the filter. The second study is a long-term in-house reproducibility test. After producing the plates, we have stored them for one week and for one month at room temperature and performed the same experiment on both. The slope of the line and the r square value demonstrates good reproducibility and stability. To summarize, we have presented the features and performance of Skin Pampa system. We have demonstrated the usage of the system for solutions, formulations and patch testing and we have proved on real examples its applicability for skin penetration estimation. For more information please visit Pion website www.pion-inc.com or email to sales at pion-inc.com Thank you for your kind attention and I look forward to answer your questions.